A pleasant good evening, viewers. Javon Wilson here for 284 Media. Now, a very special conversation this evening. The BVI is celebrating Arbitration Week 2021, an event that really promises to mobilize some of the industry's best leaders. This is a conversation that you too can benefit from. And so tonight we are speaking to the CEO, Mr. Uh, Francois Lasselle, and also the center manager. Uh, the beautiful Miss Janet Bryn. After this commercial break, we get straight into it. So stick with us. The wait is over. CCT Fire is here. Experience ultra fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all new fire blazing, super fast CCT Fire network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. Viewers, as promised, coming to you live from the BVI Arbitration Center on site. So, of course, it has to be special. We are joined by uh, the CEO, Mr. Francois LaSalle, as well as the center's manager, Janet Bryn. Thank you so much for inviting us out here to have what I think promises to be a very impactful conversation. So let's begin a little bit with, uh, you know, what the industry is about for persons who may not be okay with it. Uh, give us a little background into the arbitration industry. Off the back of the rise of the financial services industry, the BVI developed a very strong commercial court mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of disputes resolved through litigation in the BVI. Um, and the commercial court from memory was established in 2009. Around the same, around the same time, uh, a steering group was created led by the late uh, Dr. Joseph Archibald. Um, and they investigated how to morph the BVI into an arbitration jurisdiction. Um, and they managed to um, pass an a new arbitration act based on the United Nations model law in 2013. Mm -hmm. The BVI's jurisdiction became party to the New York Convention in 2014. And the BVR Arbitration Center, in which we sit right now, yes. um, was created um, in the act as a statutory body, but really created in 2016. Okay. And we opened in 2017. Okay. Um, and to go back to the question, arbitration is a method of resolving disputes between businesses and or states. Okay. Um, and it's, um, it, it, so it's similar to litigation to the extent that it's got the same objective, which is to resolve a commercial disputes. It's very different in the way it's being done. Okay. Um, and it also has a lot of value, in particular for disputes that arise from international trade. So when parties are not from the same jurisdiction. Okay. I want to get into, you know, as, as a territory, uh, as a jurisdiction, like you mentioned, how have we been able to benefit, um, if, you, if, you, if you're able to point out like particular uh, instances? So it's, it's a slow process. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'll talk about publicity first. Um, we started operations in 2017. Um, and since then, we have managed to create brand awareness uh, about the BVI as an arbitral jurisdiction right. um, across the world. Uh, whether it's North America, Europe, or Asia, we've been there, we've talked to the people, people are aware um, that we are doing this. And I think that for a jurisdiction that receives a lot of bad press yes. off the back of some of the activities taking place in the BVI, um, arbitration is a positive message that we're sending out to the world, um, telling them that we are a full service business jurisdiction you know, if you trust us to um, set up your companies in the BVI, you can trust us to solve your disputes. Yes. Um, and so, so I think that that's clearly value add. Mm -hmm. um, now, since we started in 2017, we've had cases. Um, these are cases that did not happen in the BVI before. So this is new work for the legal community in the BVI because BVI law firms do get involved uh, in, in, in arbitration. Um, so that's, that's a benefit as well. Um, and when we do host hearings here in the BVI, we're talking about counsel coming from the outside uh, to the jurisdiction, staying in the best hotels or renting villas, using taxis, uh, eating in restaurants. And, and so, you know, this is what I call business tourism. Yes. Um, and I know the BVI is big on, on the financial service sector. I think the, you know, the BVI is big on tourism and sailing in particular. Um, business tourism is not something that the, the jurisdiction has focused on. 
uh, when you take litigation, for example, people have to come and litigate in the BVI. When it comes to arbitration, people have to choose to come to the BVI. Yes. And, and I think business tourism is, is, is something that the BVI as a country can grow and a lot of income can be generated from that. And this is just the beginning, but we, you know, we're getting there. Seems like a very viable yeah. industry, Jenna. Yeah. I just wanted to add, um, when we're talking about the inception, local opportunities for people to get involved in arbitration indirectly mm -hmm. um, would start with the number of contractors that would have been involved in the design and construction of this state-of-the-art center. It's beautiful. You know, our local architect, <laughs> mm -hmm. Kelvin Liebert of KDL Designs would be one. Um, and then when we come to today, BVI Arbitration Week going on, we create a number of opportunities for local businesses to get involved, students to get involved. We have interns here with us today just being exposed to what arbitration is about so that they can be inspired for the future to Absolutely. come. We would like to see Virgin Islanders take an active role in the future of arbitration in the BVI. So many aspects of how we're kind yes. of engaging people. And, and many uh, opportunities to be capitalized yeah. on. I, I like that you mentioned that it really trickles down to uh, and, and the way the industries are interconnected mm -hmm. in the BVI. Um, and of course, business tourism and an industry that we have to continue to explore. Now, one of the things I really want to get into is, you know, the times we're living in. Clearly, the climate, COVID-19, mm -hmm. um, has forced us to transition in so many ways. Um, I'm particularly interested in learning how it has, if in any way, affected the industry. Yeah, I think the conference, perhaps, Francois, is one of those, a key demonstration of that. Mm -hmm. um, this year's conference being primarily online, you know, we're under the theme, A Little Big World, we're showing that, you know, business will continue and arbitration. And here at the center specifically, we've played a very active role in helping not just ourselves mm -hmm. adapt to the new world or a new way of doing things yes um, but also playing a part in educating the wider industry in how we will conduct not just the conference but arbitration hearings yeah. so perhaps you could speak more to that so, so the one thing i would like to add to this yeah. is mm -hmm. um when we were thinking through how to establish the bvi international arbitration center one of the first few things that we recognized was that the bvi um is in um a jurisdiction in a hurricane corridor. Mm -hmm. And well, we were proven right um, in 2017, obviously, but the way we structured the IAC um, is by using a lot of cloud um, applications. So our marketing, our accounting, our document management, all of this is remote by default. Mm. Um, the entire staff has laptops instead of normal computers. Yes. Um, and We've been using Zoom even since before the pandemic, um, because you know if you if you do grab uh, a case from Asia, uh, the likelihood of those clients willing you know be willing to cross the, the world to, to go and uh, arbitrate in the BVI uh, is is very slim. So yes. we we expected in any case that part of the caseload that we would handle would be remote. So we've been equipped uh, to handle remote earrings from the onset mm -hmm. and and we've you know we've facilitated remote hearings even before covid yes. and so to that extent mm -hmm. um covid didn't bring about change mm -hmm. to the way we operate as an arbitration center um which was good news to yes. some extent yes. because You're we didn't have <laughs> to adapt like other centers had <laughs> right, to right. um and and you know if, if anything covid has given us the opportunity to stress test uh, the setup technology-wise that we have here in the BVI mm -hmm. um, and that people have witnessed as part of the Commission of Inquiry, yes. um, where we essentially mm -hmm. hosted hearings uh, pretty much every day for six months yes. um, and consistently. Mm -hmm. um, so so there, was not, there was not a drastic change in our modus operandi. Um, COVID, however, did impact the arbitration community um, and all the hearings moved online um, for an extended period of time. And some centers and arbitrators and councils did adapt. Mm -hmm. um, others are still struggling to adapt. Um, and part of our responsibility as an arbitration center is, is to help our users and clients to 
um, adapt uh, in a sense. Um, and mm -hmm. so we've been doing a, a lot of that. Uh, the main impact COVID has had on us is preventing us to travel, uh, to work on that brand awareness. And as someone who has been traveling uh, quite a bit to uh, attend conferences and meet with law firms, um, I realized last year that I spent, you know, a lot of that time nurturing existing relationships of the BVI International Arbitration Center rather than creating new ones. Yes. Um, and, and, and while it's important to, to extend the network and, and, and to work on new relationships, mm -hmm. I think that at the same time, we didn't waste our time mm -hmm. uh, by, you know, building and reinforcing um, what we already have. Yes, yes. Um, so COVID had an impact, but I think um, it was mitigated by our ability to morph our marketing strategy to, to remain uh, at the forefront of the market. And the conference that we have this week is a great example of that. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, overall, um, I think it's been minimal. Excellent. Now, you mentioned relationships, and I think this is a key way for us to segue into the next question. Um, who would you say are some of our main competitors? And you mentioned uh, maintaining relationships, strengthening those relationships. Um, but how are we, uh, you know, trying to attract new business, especially in these times? I, <laughs> I will dodge the question on competition. Okay. Um, <laughs> we... we no, and, and I'll be I'll be completely honest about yes. this. We we do not really compete against other arbitration centers. Okay. If I travel to Miami and I speak to law firms in Miami, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say when you're negotiating a contract, you should put the BVI IOC clause with an arbitration in the BVI mm -hmm. as your your first bet, mm -hmm. um, because this is not going to work. So if I go to Miami and I speak to a law firm, I'm going to tell them, well, when you're negotiating your contract and the other party from Peru doesn't want to have a AAA clause with a seat in Miami, mm -hmm. instead of going to London or Hong Kong or Paris or Peru, your backup clause, yes. in, you know, if you can't play at home, come and play in the BVI. Yes. Yes. And, and this is kind of the approach. So we, we're not really competing against the LCIA or Hong Kong, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the arbitration, I call it the arbitration pie, is big enough for all the centers. There are mm -hmm. a lot of arbitrations out there that mm -hmm. are not administered by institutions. Mm -hmm. so, and the pie is growing as well because arbitration is really becoming mainstream. So I don't need to compete against Jamaica or yes. Barbados yes. or Bahamas or mm -hmm. London. There is enough work for everyone. It's about convincing clients and law firms that one, an arbitration is better administered by an institution rather than by an arbitrator, mm -hmm. what we call ad hoc arbitration. So these are arbitrations where no institution is appointed um, and where the arbitrator is basically going through the arbitration with the parties under a specific uh, legislation. Okay. And if you go through an arbitration like this without an institution administering, your, your experience of the arbitration will be as good as your arbitrator. If you've got a really good experienced arbitrator, it's going to be really smooth. Mm -hmm. If you've got an arbitrator that essentially is not very experienced, you, 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 know, you may yes. open the Pandora box and, and, right. and get into trouble and have a very long and you know, yes. annoying arbitration. So mm -hmm. this is where we focus our work. Mm -hmm. we, we don't really compete with everyone. We, we're trying to tell people, look, you know, we can do this. We can do it really cost effectively. Um, you know, come and look at our facilities. You know, this is best in class. Yes. And I've mm -hmm. traveled to some facilities elsewhere, in major jurisdictions, and we've got something that's really good here. Mm -hmm. And when you're done with a hearing, you can go and snorkel or sail or whatever, so when, which when? is, you know, value add, I suppose. Yes. Um, so, so that's the first part. Uh -huh. we, we don't really compete. We, everyone is trying to attract work that essentially is not necessarily coming to institutions already. Um, the second part of the question, I cannot remember. <laughs> oh, basically how we're uh, attracting new business. So attracting, so, so I can describe the sale cycle mm -hmm. um, of arbitration as an institution. Okay. Um, 
The first thing to understand is that you cannot start selling a jurisdiction because we're not selling the center, we're selling the BVI. Yes. So you cannot start selling the BVI as an arbitral jurisdiction until you have an institution, the right legislation and so on. And people may tend to think that the right legislation is the Arbitration Act. It is, but you also need ancillary legislations to facilitate arbitration. So for example, in 2017, um, a, a new legislation was passed to exempt from work permits persons that would come to the BVI to carry out or support an arbitration. Okay. And that was critical. Like, if I was an arbitrator, I would not come to the BVI if I needed a work permit. Right. Because imagine a case where the BVI government is a respondent in an mm -hmm. arbitration mm -hmm. and counsel for the other party, the claimant, gets stopped at the airport because they didn't receive their work permits on right. time. Right. As a jurisdiction, we will lose our legitimacy mm -hmm. in, you know, within 15 seconds. So once you have that legal ecosystem in place, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once you have the facilities that, you, you know, people don't necessarily believe you've got state-of-the-art facilities in the BVI. You know, if, if you're in Hong Kong, they're pretty thing about palm trees and beautiful beaches, not necessarily about Rita House and the arbitration centre. Right. So being able to demonstrate that you've got the right legislation, you've got the right facilities and the right technology is what gets you to the table. Mm -hmm. And we got that on the 1st of January, 2017. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and once you're at the table, you can start the conversation. And then it's about selling the BVI product when it comes to arbitration. So you're selling the legislation, you're selling the facilities, you're selling the panel of arbitrators. We've got over 200 arbitrators on our panel. Okay. Uh, you you're selling the flexibility of the legislation in the BVI that has many opt-ins and opt-outs. You're selling the fact that our panel is an open panel. So if counsel cannot find someone they like to become an arbitrator for their case, they could select someone outside of our panel. And once you have those conversations, you talk about you know, your ability to do the same job as other institutions, mm -hmm. but probably faster because you don't have 200 cases right now um, and, and, and more efficiently, I suppose. So um, you start having those conversations. Right. And, you know, the first time you have that conversation with a law firm, they listen to you. Mm -hmm. The second time they start asking questions. And the third time... You, you start realizing that they will consider potentially using your clause mm -hmm. um, in some of their contracts mm -hmm. when they cannot use what essentially would be their favorite clause because every law firm will have a clause. And when you're the new kid on, in the market, mm -hmm. you, you're not the, the default clause in the market. So, so that's where, you know, we, we're walking that ladder yeah. from I have nothing to... I've got the product to, I'm talking to people about the product to, they're starting to use the product. Yes. And we've had confirmations, and I think this started in 2018, that our clause is used in some contracts. Yes. Um, and then to finish the cycle is, that was step one and step two and step three. And now the BVI has the BVI IEC clause in certain contracts. Now you need to wait for those contracts to go bad and for people to start an arbitration. Yes. And then you get a case. Excellent. And this is why historically um, other centers, when you, you start this cycle, it can take um, five years to get your first case. Mm -hmm. um, so Francois, now, to bring us towards today, today. <laughs> we got our first case in year one. Thank you, Jeanette. Okay. Um, but today is, is part of what we do. We, um, we invited a lot of pr you know, premier international speakers who know about the BVI um, to speak on themes mm -hmm. that are, for lack of a better word, hot potatoes in arbitration yes. Yes. Um, with a connection to the BVI. Mm -hmm. So this morning there was a panel on third party funding in arbitration uh, with two um, panel members being from the BVI. Okay. Um, we're now talking about trust arbitration in the Caribbean with you know panelists from the BVI and from you know other jurisdictions in yes. in, in the Caribbean. So um, we we use BVI Arbitration Week uh, to market the centre and our capabilities, obviously, but also 
to bring our arbitration friends, yes. if you wish, mm -hmm. closer to us mm -hmm. and, 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 and get them to think about uh, the BVI's jurisdiction and to talk about it. Um, Absolutely. And, it, and it, you know, it's just part of the plan. Excellent. And what I'm hearing is, you know, you guys are able to build that cust uh, customer confidence mm. by marrying the industry to the BVI as a product. And also a term that you are very special on, collaboration over competition. Oh, yeah, certainly. So, <laughs> so I'm going to allow you to go into the, the other activities that are planned for the week. I know we kicked off uh, yesterday mm -hmm. and clearly we mentioned the event for today. Day, but what else uh, are persons to expect? Yeah, speaking of collaboration, I think certainly through the conference, you'll see a lot of that. We have a lot of major industry partners partnering with us on BVI Arbitration Week. Um, organizations such as Arbitral Women, who um, will be having a session later on today. In fact, um, my colleague Hannah Duval and myself will be participating on a panel called Arbitral Women on Diversity. A very important panel, if I might add, um, where we get to discuss issues amongst women in arbitration, a very relatable topic to any industry, yes. um, but arbitration being a very big, you know, international level type of game, if you will, for yes. lack of a better word. Um, I think it will be very, very key to listen to for any aspiring lawyers out there. Make sure you take part in this session to just gain some more insight as a female or anyone who might be um, struggling with any type of diversity, who get to hear some of these women's experience because we're talking to three top women in arbitration. Excellent. And you can't miss it. Yes. Yeah. What about the rest of the week? So the rest of the week, we have our JS Archibald lecture taking place later this evening with a cocktail reception following. Um, we have Chief Justice the Honorable Dame Dennis Pereira. Dennis Pereira. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to mess her name up. <laughs> but she is a very admirable woman. I got to meet her the other day. The um, first actually, female Chief Justice. Yes, and from the Virgin Islands. She's yes. from Virgin Gorda. Yeah. From Virgin Gorda. So, yes, <laughs> another key person, woman to listen to as you, as aspiring lawyers um, and arbitrators, if yes. I might say that as well. Um, Make sure you take part in that session just to learn and get some insight as to what, what it takes to be a leader in arbitration or in the field of, of law. Yes. Uh, I want us to speak to, as we begin to close out, the opportunities that exist, because mm -hmm. based on what I'm hearing, economically viable, really continuing to, to push the BVI as a mm -hmm. brand to the forefront. And of course, at the same time, uh, representing so many opportunities for young people. Yes. Um, what is the gateway in and, and what is what can young people expect from the industry in particular? Yeah. Well, speaking of young people, um, I might have said it before, but I want to say it again because we're actually very excited to have some interns with us this week um, and I mean shout out to them for even just taking the time out of their busy schedules yes. <laughs> um, seniors from CETA spending the whole week with us um, getting to hear and participate and learn and grow um, they're all aspiring to be future politicians or lawyers um, so it's great for them to be here and get that exposure mm -hmm. um, and the center it's something we're always excited about we've participated in in the past with yep um, and we'll be doing the same in the future um, with, with you know with just about any student body that we could get engaged with to just make sure community-wide that our young people are aware of the opportunities. Um, we've often talked about, you know, a lot of these young people might, they might hear the big law firms, the Harneys, the Kanyers, um, all who are partnering with us this week, um, but they might not know exactly what all they do. They just know it's a law firm. Right. But these are actually law firms that do have an arbitration practice within their business. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we work closely with them as well. So we just want to, again, create that level of exposure so that the future, this arbitration center can see more Virgin Islanders playing active roles in becoming a center manager, becoming the CEO, becoming yes. the registrar, um, whatever, whatever um, positions will be at play in the future as the center grows. Now is the time to get involved and 
I also would like to take this opportunity to encourage young lawyers. Another thing that we talk about a lot, when you go away to school, you get your degree, don't rush back home. I know it's great to rush back home, but it's more important for you to get that experience mm -hmm. so that when you come home, that you have a resume that speaks volumes of who you are and your ability to take on a leadership role at the BVI International Arbitration Center or Harneys or Conyers or wherever. Um, so that's the message that I, I would like to encourage young people to take note of. And pretty good advice. You wanted to say something? Quick thing. Yes. I mean, part of our mission is to help sophisticate not just the BVI, but the Caribbean yeah. um, when it comes to arbitration. Yes. So, Yes, we've, we've worked with YEP. We, we had a debate today where we, we kind of helped um, those um, uh, teenagers to, to, to debate about a legal topic. Um, we also about to roll out uh, tribunal secretary training that young lawyers will be able to, to go through okay. to receive a certificate and then be listed on a panel of approved tribunal secretaries. Um, and, and a tribunal secretary is basically someone, a lawyer, that will help the arbitrator administer the arbitration. Okay. And so this is a really great way for a litigation lawyer to get exposure to the inner workings of an arbitration because arbitrations are private. If, you, if you're not in one of the teams involved in the arbitration, you will not get that exposure. Right. Um, so, so we're going to roll out this training. And historically, we've held and sponsored trainings in the BVI through the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators. And, and those trainings start at the foundation level where people can hear about arbitration and what it is to mm -hmm. the most advanced level like the fellowship. Um, so we have proactively tried to be a platform in the BVI to, to help grow local and regional talent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, with regards to arbitration. Excellent. And we will continue to do so. Of yeah. course. I mean, I am so intrigued by everything that I am hearing here today. I'm learning a lot as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm absolutely sure this is a conversation that will be insightful for our viewers as well. I'm going to give each of you the opportunity uh, to not only plug uh, your forums on how persons can keep up with the BVI Arbitration mm -hmm. Center, but a quick opportunity as well to close out and, of course, remind our viewers uh, to support the events. Mm -hmm. Me first? Yes, <laughs> ladies first. Well, I just wanted to reiterate um, the point I was trying to make earlier. Young people interested in law, now is the time to plan your future. Go out there, find your school of interest to study your, your passion of law, if it is, and get that experience before you come home. Make it a point, if you can, pick up a second language, and you could come home and run the arbitration center or be a leader in our territory. Very good. BVI Arbitration Week is not a BVI conference. Um, if you go to our website and you look at the speakers, you will very quickly realize that this is a completely international conference. Um, the rust of speakers, the themes, are themes and speakers that you could get the opportunity to watch in Hong Kong, Paris, London, New York. There is absolutely no difference. The quality is there. Um, and I, I would strongly advise the viewers to uh, go and register. The conference is free. That's not the case of most of arbitration conferences. Um, and just get some exposure. Um, Excellent. And what is that website? www.bviac.org. I love it. Collaboration. But you know, I, I know, key collaboration. Uh -huh. It would be remiss of me to not mention our honorable um, no, attorney general. Yes. Don, Don Smith. Smith. Yes. Yeah, I'm having a brain freeze at the it's moment. Okay. Don Smith. She will be giving our conference keynote today. Um, I mean, sorry, I'm getting all mixed up. On Thursday, along with our honorable premier, Andrew Boy, mm -hmm. will be giving our welcome address. 
Yes, so, so a beautiful be totally network. Remiss of me to mention, not mention that. <laughs> yes, and again, marrying uh, the, the interest of the BVI to the industry. I absolutely love yeah. it. I want to thank both of you guys for making the time to sit with us mm -hmm. to speak about this industry. Um, like I said, I think a, a very important conversation, especially as we celebrate mm -hmm. BVI Arbitration Week. Viewers, you can head to the website, check it out, and of course, continue to support. Like Janet said, uh, get the education, get the experience, and come back and lead this beautiful beautiful, beautiful arbitration center. I want to thank you so much again for joining us. My name is Javon Wilson, signing out. Bye-bye. Yes.